Well, good morning, adventurers. Here we are in the Super Adventure Squadron garage. Three bikes here today, 701, my T7, and a little WR250 over the back. And these are for two guests that are, I'm taking to show a bit of Australia. So we're off on a 28-day trip, about 11,000 kilometers. So yes, some big days, but that is just... Uh, it's just a guideline, right? We it's definitely subject to change. No trip that I organise is set in stone. Uh, no trip that you organise should ever be set in stone. It's all about just having a, a, a rough plan and then you give it a go, right? See what happens. So this this trip, you can see some of my previous trips on my wall out there. I need to uh, probably pin this down a bit better, but. Um, yeah, the trip this time is basically from Melbourne up through up through Mildura, uh, up to Broken Hill. The uh, there's a Mad Max film being filmed up here at the moment, so we're going to see we're going to see if we can get into the uh, old Mad Max museum here in Silverton, just out of Broken Hill. And uh, yeah, this is a very desolate area where they film Mad Max. So um, yeah, we'll see what happens there. We might not be allowed anywhere near the place, but let's see. Then we're coming across into the Flinders, spend a couple of days riding through the Flinders, then up the Unandata to the uh, to Fink, which is a little town just here. So as you can see, I haven't been there before. Uh, and to see the Fink Desert Race. So the Fink Desert Race is about 250 kilometer track that goes from Alice Springs down to Fink, they race down to Fink, and then they, the next day they race back, and you've got uh, motorcycles, buggies, full drives, all sorts of stuff, and uh, yeah, so we're, we're going to be at the, at the Fink end somewhere, you know, track side to, not too track side, but off the side somewhere to uh, see if we can see some vehicles cruise past. Uh, and then we're going to head out to um, out this way, out and have a check check out Uluru uh, and the Olgas. Uh, oh, they're all pretty much in this area. Back up through Alice Springs, we're going to do the Hay River Track, which comes through the Simpson Desert and across. So we got permits to do that. Uh, and then we're going to head up through Diamantia Lakes, right up to the Gulf Country, across here, over to Townsville, and then basically wiggle our way down the coast. Uh, we're not going to give you a ride on the coast because it's winter. Everything south of Brisbane is cold and wet, nice and warm and dry, right? Actually, it's a little bit south, it's the Tropic of Capricorn, right? Oh, no, it's a bit north of Brisbane, I think. But anyway, uh, we'll, we'll head in, stay inland a bit and we'll wiggle our way through the hills. I've got a few tracks to, uh, to try out and eventually back to Melbourne. Um, I think by the time we get south of Sydney, it'll be a... Poof, get home into a warm shower as quickly as possible. So yeah, that is the plan. So this is a month long trip. So what do you take on a month long trip? Well, basically I take no nothing different than I did on a two week trip. Once you're out there for a week or more, you're pretty much carrying the same gear because but, you know, what's the difference? You, don't, you never take like a month's worth of food because you don't have a month's worth of fuel, right? So you have to stop at towns pretty much every day or at least every second day. Uh, and you have to refuel, so you might as well buy food. Um, what you do want is for everything to be in good working order, reliable and uh, reliable. Mm, we'll see about these KTMs. I think the WR is pretty pretty reliable, easy to fix anyway. Um, and uh, yeah, so anyway, let's see what I've got on board. All set up for winter heading out of Melbourne uh, and then summer up the north. Actually, let's start with my gear. So I do have a little backpack with uh, water, uh, water bladder and a first aid kit in there. Nothing too exciting. I've been using this um, USWE backpack for couple of years and yeah it's good I like it fits well small just holds enough um, it's good then I will have let me lay these out okay so on I will just be wearing a jersey for when it's um, when it's warm 
just keep the mud off stuff and then I'll be wearing body armor. So in the in the desert areas, basically body armor for impact protection with just a jersey to keep all the crap off over the top. So this is a Komaini set of um, body armor. It's got all the, uh, you know, CE rated uh, pads, back protector. That's the main thing that I like, a good back protector. Uh, yeah, so Komaini make body armor. Then over those, for when it's cold and wet, I have a wet weather jacket. This is a lined jacket. I'll give you the model number. Uh, I'll put it up on the screen because I don't know what it is off the top of my head, but it, it's it's really warm and I've tested it in a pretty heavy rain and it's fully waterproof. It's uh, It's been really good to me so far. So what you will notice with the this setup is no real abrasion resistance. If I slide down the highway, uh, I mean, it'll take a while to get through, you know, elbow and shoulder pads um, and, you know, a jacket. So this has got armor in it, but I will take out the armor because I'm going to have this underneath. Um, so, yeah, but it's certainly not like, you know, um, a mesh, a Kevlar jacket or um, or a leather. Uh, so, but the, the plan is not to spend too much time on the highway. It's, uh, I guess... It's a risk I'm willing to take, you know, in the outback on the dirt roads, you tend to, you know, if you leave the road, something happens, you tend to tumble a few times and you're stopped. And that's really when you want impact protection. So don't argue with me. That's just what, that's just what I'm doing. You make your own decision. Um, pants. Uh, I have got adventure pants. So these have got a bit of abrasion resistance, but they're, they're um, got big mesh panels on the, on the fronts uh, and I've been wearing these these are nice and cool uh, and yeah I've been really happy with these too I'll put the model number up of, of those they're from Komaini as well uh, and then when it's raining for pants I've just got some generic wet weather pants which are in a bag which I'll I'll show you in a minute um, uh, the problem with wet weather pants you have to get ones with big Big cuffs, right? Hey, look, I'm not wearing my Crocs. Um, big cuffs to get over your boots to keep everything dry. The only downside actually to these Komaini pants is that they don't have big cuffs. So they really, they do need to go on the inside of your boots. Or they can be a really tight fit. Um, I think they, you know, they will go over a skinny boot. But if you've got big buckles, they're not going to. Uh, and then actually what I do wear is I got knee guards that go... Um, with this floating cup, um, they're not proper, uh, proper knee, what do you call those big robotic things, but these are the next best thing, I think, you know, they're, they're pretty good. Um, I've been happy with them, um, the Velcro on with big, wide Velcro pads, and I put these on the outside of my, that's why they're dirty, I put these on the outside of my knees. So that's the gear that I'm going to be wearing. Obviously, my helmet over there. Uh, and then, yeah, let's check out the bike. So up front, I have my inReach. Was is a Delorme inReach, but it's really now it's a Garmin inReach. Garmin owns them now. And my drone um, drone remote go there, and phone and navigation goes up here, and I put a little thing for a got an insta 360 thing which you know i can only fit so much memory card so this won't do too much work but basically mounted on the front um the bike has got its high fender kit on uh crash bars bnb bash plate and for this trip we have talked to motos and they are very generously willing to help us out and supplied us with some tires. So this is the Mo new Motors Tractionator Dual Venture. They are they're quite interesting to look at. You know they, they are quite a blocky pattern. You know I can fit my finger in here pretty easily. This is the tubeless um, type, and on the other bikes these are the tube type, which you can see. You know, my finger fits in there again, but they're a, a bit slightly narrower block. They're a bit these look a bit more aggressive, although. To be honest, finger gap. Yeah, my finger doesn't quite go in there as easy. Probably a little bit more aggressive on the tube type. 
Uh, and these are reversible. They're not directional. So, you know, as they start to wear off on that leading, leading edge, I say this is the leading edge, the one back towards the bike. Yeah. Think about it. Um, then, yeah, you can spin them around and get good grip again by making the other side the leading edge. So, yeah, we're really keen to see how well these go and how long they last. 11,000 K trip should be a good workout. And on the back is the good old um, Motos Tractionator Adventure. So these are, I mean, these are tried and tested tires. I've, I've used a bunch of them and they last well and they grip well and they're good on-road as well as off-road. So I, yeah, I think everyone's pretty, you know, know pretty familiar with these tires and uh, they really are a good performer. Big, deep tread. They are a heavy tire, so you wouldn't be using these in a race. <laughs> but for general life on the road, they're, they're good. They definitely last. So, yeah, the front one will be the interesting one. You know, how, how much grip that offers. So back to the bike itself. Tank bag. Moscow. I got all Moscow Moto gear. Uh, really happy with it. It is fairly heavy, sort of base and bags just to start with, you know, before you even put stuff in them. But uh, but good quality, uh, well, I've found good quality. Everyone raves about them. They have good strapping and everything, really good. So the tank bag, let's have a quick look. Take off the cover, which was only in there for the southern half. Has a little pocket that it fits into. We'll undo these. Uh, has got a pocket in the front, but I feel like this pocket is almost useless. By the time I put something in there, this tank bag, it's a, a huge tank bag to start with, but it becomes even huger, and I really don't feel that us usable, so I've, I've just got a spare USB cable in there. Okay, the front pocket is going to be my cosmetics. <laughs> uh, in the front pocket... Yeah, I've got, um, you know, sunscreen, sanitizer, um, wipes, some expandable towels, some masks, some hand warmers, uh, my throttle, what do you call those, you know, ch -ch -ch -ch, omni grip thing. And the main body is basically my electronics gear. So I've got my drone um, charging batteries camera a little speaker the drone remotes in here for the moment because i don't really want it out in the weather um, and a torch and memory cards and a few spare batteries so it's all basically electronics gear that is it that's all in, that's in that huge tank bag i feel like moscow could delete some shit off this tank bag it's just not necessary there's a pocket down the front here consider this my moscow motor moto review too this pocket is so small, you're not going to get anything in there except a few coins. Maybe it's okay for a coin pocket. I'd rather just get rid of it. It's like a, a waste of material that I feel. Uh, the bladder that can go in here, good idea uh, for when this turns into a backpack. So it unclips and turns into a backpack. That's really why it's this shape and this size. Um, but you know, I never use the bladder while it's on the tank. It's just going to be you know, even bigger. Uh, and then I don't know about this two two pocket system. I, I think I would rather just one deep pocket with maybe dividers, but it is what it is. Um, so yeah, and obviously you can see that I've, I've it's powered, so I've got all my cables running from the battery through a fuse and all the rest of it switched comes in and it charges all my batteries and everything. So that is the tank bag. Okay, so strapped onto the outside of this is the Moscow Moto Reckless 80. I have two giant loop fuel bladders. Well, bladders, they're not fuel bladders, but they're bladders. Um, not for, you know, I don't know, some rules about these things, but they're, they're, they're our temporary storage of fuel. And so when these unroll, they're, they're pretty big. I'm yet to decide whether I'm going to have them strapped on here basically down this, the front on each side, the back of the bike is going to be freaking heavy then, or whether I can, like I used to on my 1190, have them draped down here and then just tie them off, tie them off to the crash bars and have them both hooked together up here. I think that's what I will do. It just makes the bike handle a lot better. Um, and yeah, just keeping the weight 
further further forward so that is the plan for those um so i'm i actually have to carry i think about 30 liters so 28 liters so i've got two of these these are 12 liter bladders one on each side and i have an additional six liter bladder on the top if you've got these desert fox fuel bladders um, they're five liter bladder sorry um don't roll them up if you roll them up the 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 liner inside just gets killed well that's what i've that's in my experience so these are something that you really need to store flat so anyway i open this up what have, oh, this is a rain cover which is going to go over over goes over all of this and gets tied down by the by the beaver tail um and there's some extra wipes in there so yes so the fuel bladder throw that on the ground so then in the back here, this is why my bike is felt looks quite overloaded or it's got a fair bit on there, but there's actually not much, <laughs> not much in here. There's not a lot of weight up the top. So my drone. So I'm just going to click this open, open it up. And there is the Skydio. So that's going to get a fair bit of action this trip. I am hoping. Um, very, very excited to use this puppy. So if I just flip this over, I don't need to flip it over. There's a couple of clicks here. This is called, this is the Andy Straps A1 bag, I think. It is a really, I really like it. I've been using it for years now and it's a, it's a good bag. Um, two big pockets on the sides, flap, one, just one big pocket in the middle and it ties down well, easy to open and close. I am happy with it. So in here, so in, in here, my wet weather jacket will go because obviously I'm wearing it at the start, but most of the trip I won't be wearing it once we get up north. So that will get stuffed in here. Something you need to think about when you're leaving from Victoria. Uh, I've just got you know my camera thing me jiggy. I might use that in a minute. Um, now I've got spare gloves in here. I think I'm actually not going to take these winter gloves. I've got my Kamini heated grips on here. So what I think I will, I'm going to do is leave these at home and I'm going to take, you know, the the rubber gloves that you put over your normal gloves because I don't really need the thick insulation too much. Um, but I do need, I do want them to be waterproof. So, yeah, these, these may stay at home. Uh, and then in there, there's my wet weather pants, which I'll be wearing, uh, and a couple of tubes. Right, so that's that's it. That's in the in the top. Now I've watched a couple of um, packing videos recently, and I tell you what, some people bring a huge amount of stuff, and then some people bring nothing. So I think the people that bring nothing are really just going to happy to suffer overnight. You know, I'm going to be pretty relaxed. So. <laughs> Like I said, everyone has their own ideas. Now, in the side pocket here is my, I've got a puffer jacket stuffed into that. So that's gonna sit in there most of the time, but I do need that for the trip up and the trip back just to keep warm. I may even sleep in that in, uh, in some, for some nights when it's, uh, we've got below zero temperatures, which it does get to below zero in the desert. And on this side, I've just got all my toiletries, you know, soap, um, toothbrush, toothpaste, all that sort of stuff um, is in this pocket. So that's pretty much it for the Andy Straps bag and the drone. So as you can see, not, not a lot of weight up top. It's not even that big. By the time I just add the drone, drone on there, that's what makes it the biggest. Uh, a couple of giant loop um, straps in there too. That's to tie extra things down. Um, they're these, these straps. So we got them with the, with the bladders. Um, so thanks to Giant Loop too. Uh, Giant Loop in Australia is struggling with stock, but um, Giant Loop America uh, helped us out with these. They gave us a good discount on these bladders, so and I'm, we we really we really needed them for this. You know, this, get the, get stock back in Australia because this is really we need these things in Australia. Not enough options. So the, in the Moscow Moto 8, in the Reckless 80, uh, we have one main bag and I have a small pocket on the bottom. This is a four litre one. It's open at the moment because I was changing some stuff that's in there. Um, so in this one, I have a water bottle, 
two li two liters of water, some sunscreen, um, and then my f pump uh, uh, wheel, you know, for tires. Um, pump is sitting in the bottom of this. So that's all that's in that pocket. Two liters of water, obviously. There's two kilos straight away, right? But um, that, that that bottle's half empty. Uh, I'll fill that went for the days that we need lots lots of water. And the pocket on this side has basically it's just all tools. So my main tool roll and tool kit is at the bottom, and at the top I've got some tapes. Uh, I'm actually taking the Yamaha um, OBD tool. So if anything happens with this bike or the WRs, uh, I can just plug that in and it will tell us, you know, which sense is playing up or if it's critical or not. Um, and, oh, and a spare, with the, with the tool kit is a spare air filter. It's all oiled up and ready to go. So I'll change that probably halfway around. So... That's that's in this bag. I can pull that out so you can see. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I've written on there. Tools. Property of tools. <laughs> so I've actually written on each of these bags what, what I'm keeping in them. Um, so that I don't, you know, get lost. Okay, so the, the main bags, we can flick these open. Oops. Uh, and these bags just slide out. That's the great thing about these Moscow um, Moscow bags. Oh, this is a bit tight. So in this bag, I have, you can see, my tent, fly, a gas bottle. That's why I've got this out, because I have to change. I've got to put this gas bottle in, a full one, instead of a half-empty one. Um, clothes and a pair of shoes. I'm actually thinking of moving the shoes into this bag, which is, you know, got heaps of room. Um, it'll make this bag a little bit smaller and I'll probably use my shoes, um, a bit more often than, you know, I don't really want to remove this bag. So why shoes? I mean, obviously I'm going to be wearing boots, but I, part of an adventure for me is going and seeing sights. So I like to pull up to somewhere, put on a nice bit of pair of walking shoes and, you know, do a one or two K walk. That's part of an adventure for me. So uh, I am definitely taking shoes. So that's that bag. Ugh. We have my sleeping bag, a chair, my cooking kit, a pillow, a towel and some spare food. I've got I carry three spare meals, so they go in there. So that is everything that's in there. Sleeping bag and um, and uh, what did I write on this one? Oh yeah, that's the tents in this side. So the tents in this side, sleeping bags in this side. So really, that's the four bags. You know, the two big bags, the two small bags, um, and that is that's everything. So yeah, I, I don't think I'm overloaded. So I've weighed this. Um, I have 23 kilos, uh, including the Moscow panniers themselves. 23 kilos plus I've got like three kilos. Oh, I think there's nearly four kilos now uh, in the tank bag. So 23 plus four, uh, no, I've got 27 kilos. Um, and then I've got my backpack, which actually weighs practically nothing until I fill it up with water. So I'll always have three liters of water in there. So that's three kilos. And I've got an additional two liters of water in there for the Simpson crossing. So yeah, that's it. So that's the plan. Um, by the time you see this video, we'll be well on our way. So don't bother typing in the bottom doo -doo 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 -doo, saying, Oh, you should take such and such. Well, bad luck. I've left. I'm long gone. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's my kit. This is really just, you know, for your interest to say, see if your kit sort of is similar or if you go, oh, I wouldn't bother taking. Well, you know, I noticed in Tom's video he just posted that he doesn't have a chair. So I'm pretty sure he didn't have a chair. 
So yeah, sitting around the campsite, no, he's going to be sitting on a, a log. And that's that's his decision. A lot of people will say, no, I don't need to carry a chair. What, why would I carry that extra weight? Um, clothes. Tom was saying he does not, he's not taking any clothes. He's just going to buy you know, new pairs of jocks once a week or something. Um, I've just I've got many clothes, just some jocks and socks, uh, a spare jersey in case that jersey gets saturated. Um, socks is the the, the big thing because you don't want feet to get wet and stay wet. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Wish us luck. It's a big trip. Uh, we will be posting on social medias. Uh, yeah, so I will be posting on uh, my Instagram. I, I really. I don't use Facebook really, but Instagram mostly. Uh, and and then there'll be a whole series of videos once this trip is done. Um, you can keep, uh, you can follow us. I'll put the link in the description, but um, it's the Garmin um, sort of follow me thing. A bit like a, you know, like a spot tracker and Garmin has its own one. Uh, and we're slash super adventure squadron. So I'll pop, pop that up and you can watch our progress Please don't bother trying to, you know, cut us off and guess where we're going to be and try and say hello. Just if you want to come for a ride, you just let me know and we'll try and tee it up one day, um, which won't happen very often. I have, you know, I have quite a few people contact me and I try and go on as many of those as I can. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it takes a month. Sometimes it takes a year. Uh, but yeah, I'm, you know, I'm always up for a ride. I just be prepared for me to say no. <laughs> uh, so yeah, okay, well, that's all done. Um, I am about to put brand new brake pads on this front and rear. Uh, we're gonna just go for a ride, make sure everything's good, and in a few few days time, we'll be heading off. Uh, for you, we've already gone. So yeah, see you uh, when we get back. Cheers.